consider an applied mathematics problem where a vector v in Rn somehow represents the state of a situation under consideration. The state could be a position, keeping with the geometry of Rn, but typically is just a list of numbers with some other interpretation. They could be the statistics of a country's economy, the concentration of a number of different chemicals in the same solution, or any other list of quantities that are part of the same system. The state of the system isn't static. It changes over time. Unlike the continuous systems in calculus, sometimes it is convenient to measure the system after some fixed time intervals. This time interval is called a time step. And finally, since the state is a vector in Rn, the change over one time step is a sequence of vectors. If the system is in state Vk, then after the next second or minute or day or year or whatever the time step is, it'll be in state Vk plus 1. And the model is essentially a sequence vk for k plus, from 1 to infinity of states measured by vectors in Rn. How does the model move from one state to the next? If the process is linear, its progression can be described by a matrix action. That is, there exists a matrix A such that for all k, vk plus 1, the next state, is the matrix applied to vk, the previous state. This is a dynamical system, a sequence of vectors where going from each to the next is a matrix operation. Dynamical systems are powerful and important mathematical models. However, they have some limitations which are good to state up front. First, obviously, the relationship must be linear. Linearity is a good starting point for some models, but not all processes in the world are linear. It may be that the relationship between one state and the next is nonlinear, in which case a matrix would not be able to calculate the state transition. Another limitation is that each state of the dynamical system comes directly from the state before it by the matrix action. And the matrix is the same for each transition, so the only thing that affects any particular state is the state directly before it. A dynamical system has no memory. States other than the directly previous state can have no effect on the next state. Again, this is good for some models, but many systems also build up some kind of memory that needs to be taken into account. When I build a dynamical system to model some situation in the world, it's natural to ask about the long-term behavior of the system. From a certain starting vector, where will the dynamical system go? This question is mostly answered by eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, consider a dynamical system described by a matrix A. If V is an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda, then by definition AV is lambda times V. The matrix action is a change of states over a time step. But if the state is an eigenvector, then the only effect of this time step is to multiply all the quantities in the state vector by the same constant. What does this mean? First, it means that the ratio between the state quantities is fixed. If the values, the values can change, but if the state is an eigenvector, the relative values of the quantities are fixed. And this is a kind of stabilization of the system. Secondly, and more importantly, the long-term values are determined by lambda. How are the long-term values determined by this eigenvector? Well, there are six cases. If lambda equals zero, then this is a collapsing state, and all future states are simply the zero vector. If 0 is less than the absolute value of lambda is less than 1, then the sequence of states displays exponential decay. The long-term behavior is exponential decay of the original vector. If lambda is equal to negative 1, then there is a two-period oscillating state. The sequence begins with a state and jumps back and forth between v and negative v. If lambda is exactly 1, then there is a steady state. The sequence never changes. These steady states are very often important in modeling. If lambda is greater than 1, then the state displays exponential growth. The long-term behavior of the system is exponential growth of the original vector. And finally, if lambda is less than negative 1, the state displays exponential growth with an oscillation. The sign of the vector will flip back and forth, while the absolute value of the state quantities will grow exponentially. This is all well for eigenvectors, but what if the starting state isn't an eigenvector? Well, the eigenvectors still end up controlling the long-term behavior, but it can get a bit more complicated. Ideally, there is a full set of eigenvectors, and I can write any starting state as a linear combination of the eigenvectors, where each eigenvector has its matching eigenvalue. 
then the long-term behavior of the system with the starting state is indeed given by the eigenvalues, but just in linear combination with each other. If any of the lambda have an absolute value less than 1, those terms will decay away. The eigenvalues which have absolute value greater than 1 will grow, and the largest eigenvalue in absolute value will lead to the largest growth, so that one will dominate. This can still get quite complicated, particularly if there are many eigenvalues with absolute values greater than 1. For a completely arbitrary matrix A, it's pretty difficult to use this to understand the system. However, the types of matrices which will show up in dynamical systems usually have special properties which make for, make for more predictable and understandable systems. In many models, the coefficients of the matrix will be probabilities, transition terms, growth rates, or other positive real numbers. The matrix A will very often be a matrix with all non-negative entries. And there is a powerful theorem that tells us what to expect for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of such a matrix. It is called the perron frobenius theorem. There are some technical details in the assumptions for the theorem, so I'll state a weak version of it first. If A is a matrix with non-negative coefficients, then there is a largest non-negative eigenvalue with an eigenvector that has all non-negative entries. All other eigenvalues have smaller absolute value than this. The stronger version of this theorem needs a new definition. Let A be a matrix. A is called irreducible if for all i and j there exists some positive integer such that the um, ijth entry of A is non-zero. That's a bit of a strange thing, but this definition roughly captures the idea that all the coefficients in the states are somehow related. Using the definition of an irreducible matrix, here is a stronger version of the Perron-Frobenius theorem. Let A be an irreducible matrix with non-negative coefficients. Then there is a unique largest positive eigenvalue with a one-dimensional eigenspace and an eigenvector that has all positive entries. All other eigenvalues are smaller in absolute value. This is stronger in two ways. First, the inequality here is strict, which makes a huge difference. Second, there is a unique eigenvector which makes the system significantly easier to understand, as I shall show in future examples. For dynamical systems with irreducible non-negative matrices, the long-term behavior is really controlled and understood by this unique largest positive eigenvalue and its corresponding eigenvector. And to understand these systems, we're just going to calculate and interpret these eigenvalues and eigenvectors.